Hi guys, my name is Ruchel and I'm a first year medical student here at the University of Toronto and stress is what keeps us from achieving our goals. As a first year medical student, I've had to deal with a lot of stress up until now. I wrote the eight hour long MCAT, went through nine intense medical school interviews, and now I'm going through the rigorous medical school process. Now stress isn't just stopping you from excelling, it's also causing major negative health impacts like cardiovascular problems, weight gain, higher susceptibility to cancer, digestive problems, these are just to name a few. Whether or not you're in medicine, there are going to be situations where you panic and where you're going to stress. Although we know a bunch of these general tips about how to deal with stress, which ones are practically applicable? However, we didn't want to bias your viewpoint by simply telling you how we deal with stress. That's why we asked a few medical students here at U of T, as well as people from other professional careers, to talk to you about how they deal with their own stress. These strategies are very unique and I'm sure they're going to help you. We'll give you our own answers at the end of the video, and we also have a huge announcement to make, which we'll tell you about in a bit. Don't miss it. It's time to get started. Hi everyone, my name is Ashna, and I'm a first year dental student at the NYU College of Dentistry. Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. My name is Jovan Sahi. I'm a second year medical student here at the University of Toronto. Hi everyone, my name is Ariana, and I'm a fourth year industrial engineering student at the University of Toronto. Hey everyone, my name is Viraj. And I'm one of the cousins of one of the med boys. I'll let you figure out which one I am, which which one I'm related to. Um, I'm a software developer at a telecom company here in Toronto. My name is Rashi, and I'm a second year medical student at the University of Toronto. Hi there, my name is Andrew Sun. I'm a second year medical student at U of T. And so I remember a time back in my summer semester where we had two exams um, a week for six weeks straight, and it was a really chaotic time. But I found or added a few additions to my routine that really helped me to get through that. So what I tend to do is I try to make um, a schedule, a schedule that kind of outlines what days I'm going to dedicate to which lectures, which courses, and it just helps me to organize my study approach. It helps me to keep calm and not procrastinate. And just as a whole, um, setting these little goals really helps me to achieve that bigger goal. I'm able to see through to the end, but also get to the end um, and do well. At least in medicine, um, it's quite a science-heavy discipline, so there's a lot of uh, didactic learning involved. And so having and balance, so balancing it out with some creativity uh, can be quite beneficial. For me, I, I, I love playing piano, so I, pl I play a lot of piano. I'm part of a, a band in our, in our school musical year. I'm also a, a choir um, pianist as well, so you know, just getting lost in music being able to express my way, not with words, but through music is really uh, invaluable to me. When it gets busy, it can become really difficult to manage everything without having a plan. I really love using my iPad for time blocking. Every morning before I leave for school, I like to plan out what my day will look like and what I want to get done that day. And I know this might sound really straightforward, but it's definitely helped me reduce stress, especially during exam season. It gives me a good idea of what I need to prioritize so I'm not trying to do everything all at once. That would definitely be my biggest tip to just take things one step at a time. Sometimes when we look at all of the tasks that we have to finish, it can be very overwhelming and we try to do a little bit of everything all at once. But focusing on one task at a time is actually proven to increase your productivity. And just a sense of accomplishment from completely finishing a task is a stress reliever in itself. I have a couple methods to kind of deal with uh, that stress uh, when it comes. One thing that I like to do, I like to get a beverage of my choice. Um, of course, whether it's, you know, some juice or a nice cup of hot co uh, coffee, it always helps to just kind of relax my mind because there's a lot of things that are moving at work and you want to just kind of calm yourself with a nice beverage just to kind of keep everything at ease. I think for me, what's most important is that I take the opportunity to get myself uh, into a space where my head becomes clear. Uh, and so that may be going out for a walk or a jog around in the city, put some music in, put my AirPods in and just listen and just try and just, you know, escape. I might even use the opportunity to really just reflect uh, and look at the broad picture and broad scheme and, and to things and really uh, take a step back. Uh, I'm one of those people that had to write the MCAT a few times, I had to apply a few times uh, to finally make it here. And there are many days where I felt like, what if I never get in? What if I'm just not good enough? And I learned through this process that things that work best for me to manage my stress are things like cleaning my room, cleaning my closet, cleaning my desk space. 
um, all these things not only decluttered my environment, but they decluttered my mind and helped me focus better on the task that's ahead of me, whether it's something in my personal life or academic life. I also learned that I really enjoy putting on my diffuser, putting on some soft tunes, and writing down what I want to get through um, during the day or through the week. Uh, it helps create a tangible list of things that I want to address and a plan of action for me. Hold up, before we move on, we have a big announcement. I know that interview season is approaching shortly and all of you wanted a concise place to have all the information about interviews ready at your fingertips. Therefore, we created a 19 page ultimate interview prep bundle that's available on our Etsy right now that you can access and it has absolutely everything you need. I'll include a list of everything it has and make sure you do well this interview cycle. Good luck. In addition, I believe in self-care. Um, so after every exam, I go out, I try to explore the city, try new places to eat, go shopping, um, or just come home and watch some Netflix. And so just doing these little things that really make me happy um, really helps to recharge myself before I get back onto the grind. And essentially it just really improves or boosts my productivity. And the last thing I do is a lot of with breath work. I'll give Andrew Huberman a lot of credit with this technique. It's uh, two in quick inhales followed by uh, one exhale um, that just to clear your lungs. And I'll demonstrate that right now. You do that one to three times, it's perfect. And it just relaxes yourself and you're from a moment of panic to uh, complete calm. Making time for activities that you enjoy and spending quality time with friends and family is a crucial aspect of managing stress. Personally, I like cooking and learning new recipes in my free time and it helps me unwind after a long day and I find it very therapeutic. Maintaining that healthy work-life balance is so essential in ensuring that you're not getting burnt out. By incorporating these strategies into my daily routine, I've been able to enjoy my university experience without getting overwhelmed by the constant demands of my commitments. Hey guys, it's Naman, and this is exactly how I deal with stress. For me personally, stress is actually a very good thing. And I know this is a very strange thing to say, but for those of you who know what the Gear Keys Dodson Law is, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Basically, when we're about to get into a stressful or high important situation, we cannot afford to be extremely relaxed. This is because if we are, we won't be able to perform to the level that we need to. Therefore, the stress primes us and increases arousal and performance at the same time. Because of this, we need stress to become the best version of ourselves. However, it's also vital that this stress response doesn't go overboard and actually impairs performance because of the excessive levels of anxiety. In those kinds of situations, the first thing I like to do is just slow down. Impulsive decisions are always the worst, and you really need that minute to collect your thoughts. Something unique I try to do is read poems. This is a little known fact, but my grandfather is actually a poet. He's written poems about so many different topics that whenever I'm in need of motivation or I'm stressed out, I just read one of the poems and it all goes away. You can also incorporate this in your life by reading quotes or listening to your motivational speakers that can motivate you to keep going. I feel like I've learned a lot about stress because throughout my undergrad, throughout the medical school application process, I faced my fair share of stress. And I feel like one key thing that I learned is that nothing is truly that important to sacrifice your well-being over. So whenever I'm feeling stress, I always remember that this feeling that I have is simply not worth the stress that I'm causing to my mind and to my body. So sort of remembering that allows you to calm down, it allows you to devalue that stress and really figure out what's important to you. Another thing is, let's say I'm feeling super overwhelmed. I'm just gonna open up a sticky, write down everything that I'm going to have to do and just look at it. I'm going to take in the fact that it is a lot of work, but I've written everything down and it's more concrete that way. That way I'm able to actually get through things in a more sequential manner. And one of the things that I've learned in terms of how to deal with stress is simply be alone. I know a lot of people prefer to have some people around them for support when they're in a very stressful time, but personally, I don't want to take any frustration out on anyone else. So I prefer to be alone, maybe hit up a cafe like I did earlier this weekend because I was studying. I feel like this is a really effective way of just taking your own space 
and allowing yourself to calm down. Anyways, that's it for me. When I'm stressed, I have this one rule. The rule is whatever I'm stressed about, I start working on it right away. It's not after 15 minutes of YouTube. It's not after a short break. Work on it right after. And do you know why I do this? It's because whatever that stress is, the more time it's in your head, the worse it gets. So if you start working on it right away, that stress starts fading away real quick. And then most of the times what I've noticed is if I'm working for half an hour or maybe an hour after the stress was there, it's gone completely after the hour because I've shown myself that I've done the work needed to relieve that stress and actually it's made me more confident in my abilities. The second thing that really helps me is changing my setting very often. So let's say I'm studying for a medical school test. If I'm at my desk for five hours or six hours, it gets very boring and it's also more stressful because you feel like you're in the same spot for the same amount of time and that stress just keeps building up. Therefore, what I like to do is switch these setting ups time to time so I would move from my desk to the sofa or go to a library and just keep doing that so that my mind doesn't think that I'm in the same place. And because of that, it gets refreshed and makes sure that my productivity stays high while the stress stays low. We hope the video helped and now you can manage your stress a little bit better and this might help you get into medical school. Be sure to check out our worksheets that I mentioned earlier in the video and we'll see you next Monday with another Med Boys video.